text for this morning is found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27. We'll read together the first five verses. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate the governor. Then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. This is the word of the Lord. Father, as we look at this passage of Scripture, and specifically as we look at at Judas, we pray that you would open our eyes to the message you have for each of us as individuals today. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my Lord, my God, and my Redeemer. Amen. We are looking in these three weeks at the villains of Easter. And our villain this week is perhaps the most sinister, the most sinister, the most villainous of all. The one who probably hurt the most. Judas Iscariot, friend, confidant, treasurer and villain. If immortality was Judas's goal, he certainly achieved it. People just don't like Judas or what he did. When was the last time you saw a St. Judas church? Or a kid named Judas? We have Jephthahs and Joshuas and Josiahs and Jeremiahs and James and John, but no Judas. You just don't hear anyone naming their bouncing baby boy Judas. It conjures up bad things. It conjures up a person who will betray his friends. His name has gone down in history as being synonymous with betrayal. Judas was a villain's villain. So he starts off and he befriends Christ. He walks with Christ. He listens to the Sermon on the Mount. He watches as he feeds 5,000, as he walks on water. He works with Jesus. He's part of the inner circle of Christ's 12 best friends. And yet, he is a villain. It didn't have to be that way. Peter denied Christ, but he isn't known as a villain. Thomas doubted Christ, but he isn't known as a villain. All of the disciples abandoned Jesus on the cross, but they are not known as villains. Judas stands alone as the villainous disciple. And it's unlikely that he started out with the intent of becoming a villain. It just sort of happened. He becomes a villain in no small part because Judas made a fateful decision. After the kiss of betrayal, after realizing what he had done and returning the price of his betrayal to the priests, Judas hung himself. He gave up. He quit. He ran away from Jesus instead of running toward Jesus. And he missed the best that Jesus has to offer. He missed the best of what Easter has to offer. There is no question about whether Judas did something evil. 
he did. He believed in retrospect that he did. When he did it, he thought he was doing the right thing to force Jesus' hand. He did something incredibly evil. But the life of Judas, Judas and, and the events surrounding the Easter story teach us that God is not so much interested in what you did as in what you do after what you did. Judas felt guilt. He felt regret. He felt remorse. But he didn't repent and come back to Jesus. And because he took his own life before the completion of the events of Easter weekend, Judas missed the reasons for Easter in the first place. He missed first the remission of his sins. The remission of sins which is accomplished at the cross. The timing of the death of Judas is so very, very sad. According to our text, Judas hung himself before Christ was sentenced. Before Pilate finished questioning Jesus, Judas was dead. Before Barabbas was released, Judas was dead. Before Jesus was scourged with the whip, Judas was dead. Before the crown of thorns was pushed onto Jesus' head, Judas was dead. Before the first nail was placed upon the hands of Christ, Judas was dead. Before the thief upon the cross next to Jesus received forgiveness, was granted the remission of his sins, Judas was dead. And the real tragedy is this, that when Jesus was on the cross, he looked down from that horrible cross, and he saw those that mocked him, who spit upon him, those who had slapped him and struck him, when Jesus looked upon those who had pulled his beard, who had beaten him, who had jammed that vicious crown of thorns deep into his forehead, when they had nailed him to the cross, and Jesus looked out upon them, when he saw Peter, who had denied him three times, he cries out, Father, forgive them. In the old song, he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. But instead, he says, Father, forgive them. And Judas had already given up on life. He missed Easter. And he missed the remission of his sins. Remission means to be released from guilt and penalty of our sins. Jesus forgave, not in the sense that we commonly forgive, to, to stop feeling resentment, but in the sense of remission, to release us from guilt. You don't want to miss the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. What does Easter have to offer to the one who sticks with Jesus, it offers the remission of sins. It's unlikely that any of us have in our history a sin as onerous as that of Judas. We will unfortunately never know what would have happened to Judas if he had stuck around and heard Jesus say, Father, forgive them. Although Judas was used as a tool of the devil, he didn't have to be that tool. None of us have to stay the course of sin. Judas could have made other choices. He didn't have to be a villain. God is interested in what you do after what you did. You don't have to be a villain. Many of you will recognize the name of Severus Snape. Is there anybody here who does not recognize the name of Severus Snape? Not much into Harry Potter works then, huh? 
Okay, now that I've added Harry Potter to that, do you recognize the name of Severus Snape? Um, in the Harry Potter book, Severus Snape was the villain for six whole novels, about 3,350 pages, which amazingly many kids under the age of 10 read. 3,350 pages, Severus Snape is a villain until it's revealed in the last novel, the seventh book, that Snape is a hero. This looks like he became a hero at the very end, but he was actually a brave and bold soul all the way along. Okay, you don't know the name of Severus Snape. Perhaps you know the name Ebenezer Scrooge. Anybody does not know who Ebenezer Scrooge is? We've all seen A Christmas Carol, perhaps read the book. Ebenezer Scrooge is just a Scrooge if you don't get to the end of the book. If you just see the beginning of the book, we see him as a villain rather than a man who, Dickens says, was better than his word. He became a, as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city ever knew. No longer a villain. Mr. Darcy, Mrs. Coulter, Artemis Fowl, all started out as villains. It is not what you did that matters. It's what you do after what you did. Judas remains a villain because he missed the remission of sins offered upon the cross. We should learn a lesson from Judas. When we have failed, we don't run away from Jesus and give up. We run to Jesus, who releases us from our guilt. Don't give up. Jesus offers remission of your sins. Because Judas ran from Jesus, he missed the remission of sins. And he also missed the greatest event in the history of the world, the resurrection of Christ from the dead. That happens, of course, on Easter morning. On the day of the crucifixion, all the disciples, all the followers of Christ, dispersed in despair. His death upon that cross shattered their dreams and the faith of his apostles. And then an amazing thing happens. The guards fell asleep, the earth quaked, the seal was broken, the stone rolled away, the burial clothes were unwrapped. The darkness of death was shattered with the victory of the resurrection. And Jesus burst from the grave alive and Judas missed it. And many people today miss the significance of the resurrection of Jesus. It is, of course, easy to do, to miss the significance of the resurrection. There are, after all, eggs to be colored and chocolate bunnies to be eaten. I always eat the ears first. And there's ham to be cooked, ham which we couldn't eat until the resurrection. What's the resurrection got? What does the resurrection have to do with it? A grandfather wanted to see how much his four year old granddaughter knew about the Easter story. He put her on his lap and asked, Julie, why do we celebrate Easter? Without hesitating, she said, Jesus was crucified, and after he died, his body was put in the grave. They rolled a big stone in front of the opening. A bunch of soldiers guarded the tomb. On the third day, there was a big earthquake, and the stone rolled away. Grandpa is pleased with how much his granddaughter knew about the Easter story. But then she continued, and when the earthquake happened, the entire town came out by the grave, and if Jesus came out and they saw his shadow, they knew there would be six more weeks of winter. <laughs> Easter means a whole lot more than the arrival of spring. It means that the forgiveness offered upon the cross is real. Listen to the words of 1 Corinthians 15, verses 17 through 19. 
And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Jesus did rise from the dead. You don't want to miss the resurrection. For the resurrection offers us hope for the future. Judas missed that significant element of hope. If Christ is raised, then we who have believed in him will be raised to ascend into glory with him. Judas remains a villain because he never got to experience the power of the resurrection. His hopes for Jesus to be the earthly Messiah of Israel led to him to betray Christ in an attempt to force his hand, but no one could force Jesus to put his hands upon the cross. It was Jesus' choice, a choice he would have made with or without Judas because it was his plan all along. Judas missed the resurrection which transforms us and would have transformed him. The beauty of the empty grave liberates us to understand the way in which God has chosen to interact with mankind. The Messiah has risen from the grave. The Messiah has conquered death. The Messiah has set us free and given us hope beyond this life. The villain Judas sealed his reputation because he was out of the picture before the greatest event of history. He missed the remission of his sins. He missed the resurrection of the Messiah. And he furthermore missed the opportunity to be reconciled with Jesus. At the cross and in his appearances afterwards, Jesus was reconciled with his disciples and at the cross, we are reconciled with God. The villain Judas missed his opportunity for reconciliation. Part of the reason we don't vilify Peter for denying Christ, and remember he was somewhat habitual in doing so. He denied him three times. But in the end, we see Peter is reconciled with Christ. And part of the reason Judas continues to be a villain is because in the end, there was no reconciliation. For reconciliation was accomplished in the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. I am convinced that had Judas sought the forgiveness that only Christ can give, he would have experienced the peace that only Christ can provide. Forgiveness is not merely a remission of past guilt, but includes total deliverance from the power of sin, and it gives us a restoration of fellowship with God. G Judas has no chance to be redeemed. He has no chance to be reconciled because he took his life before Easter. I mentioned earlier some villains who were redeemed and later turned into heroes. Severus Snape, six whole books, 3,350 pages before we see him in new light at the end of the books, in the final book. Scrooge suffered through a night of bad dreams and a rotten reputation before he woke up and changed his life becoming a man who was better than his word, as good a friend, as good a master, as good a man as the good old city ever knew. Because we all have the opportunity to change. God is not so interested in what you did as in what you do after what you did. Jesus offers reconciliation to Peter. He offers reconciliation to the thief upon the cross. He offers reconciliation to you and to me. And he would have offered reconciliation to Judas. Unfortunately, Judas 
thought it was a lost cause. He gave up. He acted in a most dreadful manner in taking his own life. But that is what despair will do to you. He recognized that he had committed the most foul of sins. Christ was going to die. And he was the one who turned on him. The worst of villains. How can you be forgiven for that? Yet, it is for that and the sins of millions of others that Jesus was willing to go to the cross. Jesus offers us reconciliation. By taking his own life, Judas missed out on the remission of sins. He missed experience in the resurrection and he missed out on the reconciliation he could have had with Christ. For Judas, watching Jesus be led away, knowing he would not have a chance to clear things up, for Judas, all hope of reconciliation is lost. The dread of that dark Friday is only lifted three days later. We know that crucifixion day, it was just dark, dismal day of death. But we know that crucifixion day becomes Good Friday. Judas didn't know that. Peter didn't know it. Thomas didn't know it. The disciples who left Jesus to die upon a cross alone didn't know it. To them, it was just crucifixion day. No remission of sins. No reconciliation possible. No last words of goodbye. No resurrection to look forward to. Just death, despair, and defeat. The villains appeared to have won. On the day of the crucifixion, all the followers of Christ dispersed in despair. His death upon that cross shattered the dreams and faith of his apostles. We have experienced nothing like it. It is hard to imagine, but for a moment, walk with the disciples, walk with Judas. Walk with Judas as he kisses Christ and betrays him. Walk with Peter as he denies Christ three times. Walk with the sadness that our sin can envelop, envelop us and, and, and consume us with guilt. Experience the deep emotion of the loss of Jesus without the resurrection. But don't give up hope. Whatever your past, whatever your issues, your betrayals, your failures, your denials, remember God is more interested in what you do after what you did than he is interested in what you did. I saw a cartoon. It was two Roman soldiers standing by the empty tomb. The stone has rolled away. One soldier is looking very worried because they had failed in their responsibilities. The other one has got a smug look on his face. He goes, don't worry about it. A hundred years from now, no one will remember. But a hundred years went by and people still remembered. And 200 years and 2,000 years later, God's people still gather and we still remember. And if the Lord tarries another 2,000 years, God's people will still be meeting one to remember because Jesus is alive and you don't forget something like that. Judas was a villain who could have been redeemed because God is in the business of redemption. That's the reason the cross is there. In your life, there are undoubtedly sins in your past which, humanly speaking, seem impossible to overcome. 
But because of the cross, everyone is redeemable. Every one of us can have and receive the remission of sins. Every one of us can be reconciled with God. That is the power of Easter. It is not what you have done that matters. It's what you do after what you have done, which determines whether in the end you will be a villain or a saint. So you have an opportunity. Wallow in the guilt of your sin or come to Jesus. Be reconciled to him. That's the gift of Easter, that we can be reconciled with God. Let's pray. Gracious Father, I thank you that in the Easter story we have the lessons of men who failed you terribly, some who stuck with you and experienced the resurrection, some who didn't. Thank you that you are in the business of granting reconciliation of remission for sins because of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen.